the tip-off is underway from College Park, and here we go, Maryland and Northwestern from the Xfinity Center. Josh Maryland starting off with the ball on offense, averaging nearly 82 points per game. The offense needs to get going in a big way today. Yeah, and that's a little down from last year where they averaged more than 90 points a game. you got to hope they're going to be getting going early. One of the more prolific seasons in Maryland women's basketball history offensively a year ago. Chloe Bibby with an early opportunity from three. That's off the mark, about 31% from beyond the arc. As Northwestern gets into their first offensive set, but a travel from Lauren Satterwhite. will flip the ball back over the way of Northwestern. For Northwestern, they average nearly 15 turnovers per game. That's going to have to be a lot lower today. Yeah, if you want any chance of beating this Maryland team, you have to turn the ball over less than you ever have. Maryland averaging just about a dozen turnovers a game. Terps four and three in the Big Ten, Northwestern three and three. Here's Owusu, talked about her in the open, really needs to get going today. Tough fadeaway too, it's a little bit off the mark, but a fight for the offensive rebound, initially won by Bibby, and Northwestern's able to take it right back. Both teams unable to get going offensively in the opening minute. And here is Burton, talked about her in the open too, nearly 17 and a half points per game. She had 16 last time out against Penn State. She had Benzen guarding her defensively. As it skips over to the other corner now, here's Burton. Five seconds to shoot, goes into the lane and lays it up for two. Veronica Burton, the senior, getting the scoring going. And you would imagine nobody else for Northwestern would do that. Good hesitation and patience inside the paint, just getting in there and getting her layup. So how will the Terps respond? No points in the opening minute and three quarters, and Miller is off the mark. Reese there to get the initial rebound, and it went out of bounds, and will go the other way. Uh, Maryland 0 for 3 from the field to start things off. There's Joe McEwen. What a job he has done at Northwestern into his 14th season. He's somebody who's pretty familiar with the DMV. He coached for 19 years just down the road at GW, was A-10 coach of the year five times, and led the Colonials to 15 NCAA tournament appearances in his 19 years there. He's made the jump up to the Big Ten and has really turned around this Wildcat program over the past decade and a half. And one player who's really helped him turn the program around is Burton, but she can't hit from way outside that time. And Maryland comes the other way in transition. Owusu found its way to Benzin for three. That's as good as a layup for Katie Benzin. And that's a good sight if you're Brenda Freeze. Katie Benzin shooting a little bit of a lower clip than she did last year when she was the best three-point shooter in the country, shooting 50% this season, but just around 41%, but much better for her there. Went four for seven from beyond the arc in Columbus last time out. Has taken 10 or more threes twice already this season. She will shoot early and often from beyond the arc. And Maryland with the one-point advantage with nearly three minutes gone by. Into the lane, unable to get it going as Leah Hartman. Fight for the offensive rebound, finds its way to Satterwhite who comes up a bit short. Owusu in transition again, that's a charge. One of the more prolific coaches in the history of women's college basketball, over 500 career wins, 20 years in College Park. And of course the national championship back in 06. Burton puts her head down, skip pass to the other side. That's Satterwhite from beyond the arc, missed everything, might have gotten a deflection on its way to the basket. Oh, Benzin thought about it from the Gary Williams signature on the court, but instead over to the other side for Cheyenne Sellers, who's checked into the game. Sellers will uncork from three and knocks it down. Cheyenne Sellers, the freshman from Ohio. Huge contributor in her first year with the Terps. Averaging about seven and a half points per game, shooting about 34% from beyond the arc. She will shoot it from there, and as you can see, Certainly capable of knocking it down. So after a slow start for Maryland, they're on a 6-0 run as Shaw goes up strong to stop it. Courtney Shaw, the Maryland native out of Perry Hall and Perry Hall High School, a little less than an hour away from where we sit at the Xfinity Center. A bit of a homecoming for her. Bibby from a lot further away. The Australian knocks it down and Maryland getting it going from beyond the arc in the early on. She missed one in the opposite corner. This one she wasn't going to miss straight through. Terps. Three for five from beyond the arc. All of their points have come from three ball land. And they have a five point lead in the early stages. 
Sean needed help, got it in the form of Burton. 35 minutes and seven straight games for Burton. She plays a whole bunch as Hartman's unable to get it going from beyond the arc and a whistle and a foul on the floor. Northwestern needs to get it in quick. They do and find Burton. With Chloe Bibby guarding her. It's a bit of a mismatch and it's kicked out to the other side for Hartman who knocks it down. Leah Hartman, the junior from Michigan. And Northwestern's back within a bucket halfway through the first quarter. Miller coming in strong and that's another offensive foul. Second charge of the day drawn by Northwestern as that will take us into our first media timeout of the day. The three balls come in early and often for both teams. Maryland's made each of their last three and they have a two point lead at the break on Big Ten Plus. As Maryland will look to hit their stride defensively as we head down the home stretch of conference play. Look, it's already towards the end of January and now's the time where you start to think ahead towards March and both of these teams have an eye ahead towards the NCAA tournament. Both made it last year and both were eliminated, I think, earlier than they would have liked. Maryland women went to the Sweet 16. Northwestern made it to the second round of the NCAA tournament, as that's an errant pass, but it deflected last off of a Maryland player. has done a really good job in that margin. And Burton you can can't already, hit the shot. And you can already tell they're putting their bodies on the line on the defensive end, drawing two charges already. So Northwestern will have the chance to reset. Those plays can not only get turnovers, but can really boost your momentum. As Burton pulls up from the baseline, she hits it and she's going to the line for one more. Veronica Burton getting it done on both the offensive and defensive ends in the early going. And the Wildcats have the chance to take the lead. Chance for the first lead since it was 2-0 for the senior and it rattles in and out. A little bit of the commentator's curse in the first quarter of play. It was about to happen at some point, so we might as well get it over and done with Josh. As Sellers pulls up from beyond the arc, way beyond the arc, and hits it. Cheyenne Sellers with a couple of deep ones in the early going. A little fake pull up from beyond the arc. Two threes already for the freshman from Ohio. All-time leading scorer in Aurora High School history and has really translated to the college level in her first year in College Park. That's an errant pass that time from Satterwhite. Couldn't link up with Burton and the ball flips back over the way of the Terps. Really, Maryland. you wouldn't expect a freshman in a program like Maryland to get this many minutes, but she's been forced into it because the team does not have that many healthy guards. Owusu from beyond the arc hits it. Ashley Owusu and everybody getting in on the three-point action. They'll mark it along two as a matter of fact, so Scratch that off, but still a fairly deep shot from Ashley Owusu. And Maryland's hit each of their last five from the field. And if Owusu can get that shot going, it just opens up the lane for her all the time as Northwestern hits a three and answers right back. Lauren Satterwhite, the graduate student, one of the team captains with a big bucket when Northwestern needed it. Wildcats going to have to stay in the game in this first quarter, then go on and make their run. As Bibby with a reverse two, that was smooth. That's only the second two of the day for Maryland. Just a little overpower of your defender in the paint, get underneath the basket, make it easy for yourself. So this game's really picked up offensively after both teams had a pretty slow start scoring wise. Jillian Brown, whose name we haven't said too much today, is able to get it over for Satterwhite. Largest lead of the day for Maryland is five. It's at four right now and that's another interception. Angel Reese was able to get in the passing lane and now Bibby from the right wing. Can't use the glass and Burton is there to clean it up on the defensive glass. Maryland shooting 60% from the field, Northwestern 45%. Burton goes up strong, no whistle, and Satterwhite can't clean things up. Angel Reese strong to get the rebound and draw the foul. All Big Ten freshman team last year, even though she missed all that time with injury, that just speaks to the talent that she has, and Big Ten getting that on full display this season. 
Really strong game against Ohio State last time out, 22 and 11. As she's going inside here and using the glass for two. Working on Hartman and just too strong. So Reese is on the board for the first time today. A number of different scores already for the Terps, even though it's a fairly small rotation. Just about everybody getting in on the action. Five different scores already for Maryland. As Northwestern's unable to connect from beyond the arc, that was daily. Young players just go out there and compete every day. And if you're fifth or sixth in the Big Ten, you're doing a good job with a young crew. And it's a good mix as well. You look at all the freshmen. Having like the players who have that same intensity, especially on the defensive end. It's a Northwestern team that averages only about 60 points per game allowed this year. The ball back and a chance to climb into the six-point deficit. Maryland, seven for their last eight from the field. Northwestern hasn't scored in just over two minutes. Appreciate you joining us here on this Sunday afternoon from College Park. Quick moving game between Maryland and Northwestern. He's Josh Kaplan. I'm Ben Curtis, and that's Leia Hartman for three, and it rims out. Leia Hartman unable to get it going from beyond the arc. She is now one for three from deep as another Aaron pass. Hartman will bring it back up the floor. Four points on two for four shooting. Two assists, one rebound already for her. She fills up the stat categories and just about across the board. Has Collins working on her now. And with about 10 to shoot, Northwestern has to trigger quickly. Here's Daly. Coming off the screen is Hartman, and she knocks it down for two. That was smooth for the Wildcats. Good ball movement in their last possession of the first quarter. Owusu, now for Miller, trying to get into the baseline. Northwestern takes it away. Daly will try from mid-court. Don't think she got it off on time, and it was off the mark anyway. And actually a controversial pick with the last dance coming out. Michael Jordan saying he wanted Johnny Dawkins at that pick, but Bulls decided to take Brad Sellers. And Brad's daughter, Cheyenne, with a pretty good start to her Maryland career as a turnaround, too, from Paige Mott is off the mark. Mott, the sophomore from Philly, getting in on the action, but can't get on the score sheet as Maryland moves in transition. Sellers one more time and can't get it to go. Northwestern in a hurry the other way. Burton denied. It's Cheyenne Sellers all over the place to start off the second quarter as Reese gets fouled hard to the ground. First of two from Angel Reese is off the mark. Maryland shooting about 77, 78% from the free throw line. That's a spot where Northwestern has really struggled this year, under 70% from the charity stripe. 0 for 1 today, Northwestern is from the line. Now 1 for 2, Maryland is. After Reese is able to knock down the second of two. So it's a five point lead for the Terps as they put some pressure on. And Sellers is able to get the steal. Cheyenne Sellers coming the other way, turns defense to offense for two. Just effort from the freshmen there, like we talked about with Northwestern, hoping Veronica Burton's effort translates to their freshmen. The effort of the Maryland seniors and upperclassmen obviously translating to Sellers. Eight points now for Cheyenne Sellers. She leads all scorers today. And the battle for the rebound is on. It'll deflect out of bounds. Last touch by a visiting Wildcat, so it'll go back the other way. Maryland's gone by in the second quarter of play. Here's Ashley Owusu, who's been held quiet today, one for two and two points. Long two on the way, left it a little bit short. And tracking down the rebound is Courtney Shaw. It's the third rebound of the day for Shaw. As Satter White kicks it back out to Burton. Straight away three is on its way. It's off the mark, and Bibby is able to clean it up on the glass. Benson's been fairly quiet as well with the one three-pointer in the early going. It's been Cheyenne Sellers offensively for Maryland to lead the way with eight points. Bibby has five as well. Maryland working around the perimeter. Here is Sellers. Inside for Reese with seven to shoot. Tries to get Bibby, who is making a backdoor cut. It was deflected away. It's going to stay with the Turks. And a good Finds Bibby. Back inside for Sellers. Owusu sizing one up and knocking one down. Another long two from Ashley Owusu. But Maryland with their largest lead of the day. It's nine. And you just, if you're the Wildcats, you got to keep this under control now. Got to go get some quality buckets. Can't let this game get out of hand this early. 
Northwestern's last lead was 2-0, and since then, Maryland has taken control with a good run towards the end of the first quarter and now into the second. Jillian Brown is still scoreless on the day. Now over to Satterwhite. Back up top for Brown, the freshman from Grand Rapids. Three seconds to shoot for Northwestern. Have to hurry with Satterwhite, can't get it to go. And Sellers was able to fight for the rebound and Benzin was able to draw the foul for Maryland and they're right about at there right now. Back over to Owusu, has hit a couple of deep twos and she's able to draw the foul. Early stages of this game, now three minutes into the second quarter. And we'll see what he rolls out defensively for this possession as Reese was able to track down the floating pass. And that's blocked away and deflected going the other way. But I was with no Kaylee Walsh in case you're just joining us. Chance to get some extended playing time for Morris. But it's Burton up top directing traffic. A dozen to shoot for the Wildcats. Inside for Morris, back to the basket. Turn around two and it rattles home. Didn't take long at all to break that streak. No, not at all. Good move from the Mawa, New Jersey native. McDonald's High School All-American nominee coming out of high school. Had a number of Power Five offers, also had some Ivy League offers. Came to Northwestern and starting to contribute, stepping up when another player goes down. That's a sign of a good program, and Joe McEwen certainly has that in Evanston. Benzin, right wing three, it can't leave her alone for that. And a good skip pass from Angel Reese and finds Katie Benzin. That's two for two for her on the day. Just wonder if she's gonna get closer and closer back to that 50% clip she was shooting last year. Had 16 points against Ohio State. And she is up to six, as Josh mentioned. Two for two from beyond the arc. Going up strong, but can't finish, was Shaw. And some fancy dribbling from Reese to keep it alive. Benzin with the extra pass to Bibby. And Bibby missed everything. Uncharacteristic for the graduate student. Coming the other way quickly is Northwestern. And deflected out of play. I think it's gonna stay with Northwestern. Burton thought about a three of her own and thought otherwise and will re-trigger for the Wildcats. Here's Shaw. Morris who scored the last bucket for Northwestern and only seven to shoot for the Wildcats now. Lauren Satterwhite driving into the paint. Over to Morris, baseline two is good. Anna Morris averaging 0.6 points per game. She's got four already. And the lead back down to single digits for the host Terrapins. Collins has it taken away by Burton initially. That's that ball hawking of Veronica Burton, but Collins able to track it down. Over to Miller, four seconds to shoot. Owusu, that one's a three, and it's good as well. A couple of long twos for Ashley Owusu. Finally gets it from beyond the arc and knocks it down. ESPN's number 10 ranked women's basketball player at the midseason. Her game is known, getting downhill, getting to the basket. She goes, that's not working for me. Let me just stretch the floor a little bit and nail a three. Seven points for Ashley Owusu. Good balance scoring day for Maryland. Three players with six or more points as the Terps take it away once again. Owusu bends it in rhythm. Can't knock it down, though. You see that go down as often as not for Benzin and Burton coming the other way. Can't get it to go off of strong transition defense from Benzin in this game, picking up the pace really quick. Benzin will try the right wing this time, and she'll hit it. If at first you don't succeed, try again, and Katie Benson from beyond the arc as good as they get. You'd put your house on Katie Benson not missing two threes in a row, and she does not there, nails it, Terps up 14 now. Benson now leading all scorers with nine points, all of her points coming from downtown. And how do the Wildcats respond? Morris trying to get position on Reese, had it deflected away in under 10 seconds to shoot. Inside for Hartman, it knocked out a play as well. Last touch by Northwestern. We will step aside on Big Ten Plus. No, we won't, as a matter of fact. My apologies. They turned that timeout into a media timeout. But regardless, a couple of big time threes for Maryland. It may be freezing cold outside, but it's raining threes inside the Xfinity Center today. Katie Benzin, Cheyenne Sellers, Ashley Wusu getting in on the action. Seven for 13 from beyond the arc, the Maryland Terrapins, 54%. On the other side, Northwestern, two for eight from three-point land. 
So we continuously play here in College Park. As Awusu gets it over to Miller this time. She'll try her luck from three. And the foul. Or will they get the foul first? That's not something you see every day, but count the bucket as it stands, 35-18 and a 9-0 run for Maryland, 12-2 over the last three minutes, and Northwestern hasn't scored in two. And I was just going to say before that possession, if you're Brenda Fries, maybe one player you want to start getting involved is Diamond Miller. She says, I'm going to do it myself and pull up from beyond the arc. First points of the day for Miller. Now Jillian Brown will try from beyond the arc, no good, and a foul on the floor spotted. Lead of the day for Maryland and continuing to open it up. Number 12 team in the nation coming off of back-to-back -back losses. For the first time in conference play since February of 2018. That's the last time they lost two straight games in the Big Ten. And looking to avoid making it three in a row. And off to a strong start to do so. Miller. And here is Awusu with her seven points, three of five shooting. Talked about in the open. She had been struggling from the field. That's not the case today as the skip pass is deflected away by Burton. Down 17, still all that defensive effort. She's not going to give up as we see Sellers pull up. That one didn't go from the freshman, and Northwestern able to take it away defensively with about two minutes to play in the first half. And for Northwestern, if you can get this a little bit closer to single digits going into the interval, you'll feel a lot better about yourself as Sellers fouls. That runs a pretty small rotation. Only seven players have seen the floor so far for Maryland. And it's not much more than that that they have available, especially with Faith Masonis out for the season with her torn ACL. As Brown can't hit from the corner, Benzin will take it away the other way. And back to Masonis for a second, a huge piece for this Maryland team. She's that glue guy who just keeps everything together as Bibby misses a baseline J. Fight for the rebound is on. Brown hustling and Brown able to take it away. That is a huge loss, as you mentioned, though, for Maryland. Faith Masonis, really important piece. That's Melanie Daly who is able to hit. And Maryland will call timeout. Seconds to go in the first half for Northwestern. Chance to cut it down closer to single digits. Maryland trying to open it up even more as they get it inside for Collins, who gets the foul. Collins running the floor. And she'll go to the line for her troubles. Good ball movement there from the Terps to break the press, though. And you can see the pressure put on for Northwestern. They certainly want to try to force the issue sooner, sooner rather than later, knowing, yes, there's still a lot of time left, but Maryland's starting to put some separation between themselves and the Cats this first half, and especially this second quarter. Yeah, and it's ideal if you're the Wildcats, maybe get this down to like 11, 12 points before the end of the half. But, I mean, if Maryland keeps playing the way they're playing, it's going to be very tough to stop them. you got to pick up your defense a little bit. If you're Veronica Burton and the Wildcats trying to dig into your teammates and say, hey, let's get this going a little bit. 37 to 20 times the largest lead of the day, 17 for the Terps. That's a long one from Jillian Brown, and it's off the mark. And Benson's able to clean it up on the glass. Bibby with a head of steam getting into the lane. Now a Wusu in some traffic, gets her own rebound and goes to the line. <laughs> Ashley Owusu using the muscle. Just a force in there, only listed at six feet tall, but she just gets in there and bodies everybody out of the way. Misses the initial pass from Bibby, goes up, misses it, but just her, using her frame to go up again and get the foul drawn. Yeah, we talked in the open about Ashley Owusu. She needed to pick up the pace from her past couple of games, averaging about eight points in the last two games. She's already passed that, or about to be past that. Seven points for her and now make it eight. Really strong first half and really efficient first half as well. Three for six from the field, one for one from beyond the arc. If you're Brenda Fries, is the exact kind of performance you were looking for from her. Get her going early, get her going often. Second of two is good for Owusu. She's up to nine points, tied for the team lead with Benzin. Sellers has eight, Bibby has five. It's a balanced scoring day for Maryland. Every player who's been on the floor has scored for the Terps. On the other side for Northwestern, Hartman leading the way with five points, the junior. But here's Burton over to Brown. And now back to Hartman, the leading scorer for the Wildcats, adds to her tally. Three-pointer for Hartman, and Northwestern really needed that to get back within 16. About a six-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. 
And that's taken away that time by Melanie Daly. Daly going strong to the coop and it's knocked, cup rather, it's knocked away by Owusu. And now Benzin coming the other way. Terps can hold for the last shot if they want it. Bibby is trapped in the corner and now finds Benzin. And back out to Owusu and the Terps will hold for the final shot of the first half. Owusu, another deep one, way off the mark and that is how the first half will come to a close. their season so far on taking the ball away more times than they've given it up, and that's not been the case so far in the first half. We'll see what the second half has in store as it starts off with a Diamond Miller long two. Good look from Diamond Miller, and she's six foot three. She's got that high release that even if the defender's closer, she can just go up and over. Oh, five points for Diamond Miller now, the junior from New Jersey. And for Northwestern, down by 18. Need to start to get, get, batting, get back into it rather fairly quickly as the two teams exchange turnovers quickly to start off the second half. And going up strong is Hartman, the leading scorer in the first half for Northwestern. Can't get it to go, though. And Maryland will take it back the other way. Don't think Bibby was all that ready for that pass, but she was able to corral it anyway. So get an inside for Reese, and the more paint touches for Angel Reese in the second half, the better. And a beautiful entry pass from Diamond Miller, getting her involved very early in this second half. Angel Reese is up to five points as well. Everyone but Mimi Collins has five or more points, six of the seven players who are in the rotation in the first half plus for Maryland. That's a tough two from Hartman and can't get it to go. And Benzin coming the other way. Largest lead of the day for Maryland. It's 20 and it could be more. And Miller just can't quite get the friendly roll. Comes away from that one laughing, tongue out. Nice move from Burton and she's able to draw the foul. That was silky smooth from number 12 in purple. Lane parted like the Red Sea there. The Terps just didn't want to stop the ball, and Burton says, okay, I'll take what you're giving to me. She's had four or more steals in six straight games. She's been held fairly quiet in that regard, at least in the early going. No steals so far recorded, which is certainly not something you'd expect to see from a player of Burton's caliber. First of two at the line, it rattles its way home. So she is up to five points today. I have to wonder, though, how much Joe McEwen playing Burton is starting to play into it. Burton had 35 or more minutes in seven straight games. McEwen really relying on his best player, but as Miles really starting to tally up as we head into the late stages of January. Yeah, and she got, she's got to get going on early in this third quarter if the Wildcats want any chance of climbing back into this one. Perfect from the line, two for two. So the lead back down to 18, and Maryland able to break the full court pressure. Awusu, step back two, comes up a little bit short. And Northwestern looking to go in transition. Miller did really well to match Satterwhite stride for stride. And now Northwestern into their half court set. Here's Hartman again, and it rolls in and out. And last touched by Northwestern. He's taken more yeah. attempts than any other Northwestern player as Bibby is denied. Shaw with a big piece of the shot from Bibby. And now Northwestern trying to come the other way. Satterwhite in transition with a nice two. And then the ensuing turnover for Maryland. Northwestern didn't look too comfortable getting it in, but they get it to Burton on the right wing. Nice entry pass for a cutting Shaw, and she can't get it to go up and over both Bibby and Angel Reese. Game really picking up in speed now. Both teams able to go in transition. Oh, Benson thought about the straightaway three. Nice floating pass inside for Angel Reese. Can't get her own rebound. That time the Terps did the hard part right, and then Reese just couldn't finish it. The trailer is Satterwhite, but she'll drive into the lane this time. Can't get it to go. Shaw with the offensive rebound. Turns around, and it rattles in and out. And then a foul going the other way. Those are the but Northwestern with more offensive rebounds than Maryland, it should be noted. Six to three in that category. It's Benzin with a head of steam. Can't get the basket, but is going to the line. Not It'll be a first trip to the stripe today. And the first to two is good. And I'll tell you, sitting out here watching Katie Benson go through warm-ups, shooting 
20, maybe 30 free throws, every single one going through the net like that. It is the old cliche to be the first one in and the last one out, but Benson really has lived up to that in her time in College Park. And she's so systematic in everything she does. It's this, Her warm-ups are this, 10 shots from this spot, from this spot, from this spot, next spot, next spot. It's, it's incredible to watch. Has put on a shooting clinic since, since she came to College Park a season ago and has really helped the Terps offensively and is a big reason why they had the most prolific offense in the country last season with almost 91 points per game. Hartman from the right wing off the mark and Bibby strong to the rebound. Benson with her head up looking to push the pace. Finds Collins on the right side off the mark and a good rebound from Sellers. Up top for Benson. That's as good as a layup for Katie Benson. Between the first and second quarters, but since then the Terps have been outscoring the Wildcats 30 to 13. And it definitely helps that quick. Doing play underneath the basket. Jillian Green couldn't, or Jillian Brown rather, couldn't get it to go. And now Miller loses her footing, and that's going to be a travel. So that's a turnover for Maryland. That's their 10th of the day. Eight for Northwestern as Brown sizes up a three. Will now drive into the paint. Nice dish for Shaw. Really good play there. Penetration, little underhand shovel pass for the easy layup. And Northwestern's going to have to do a little bit more of that, sharing the ball. They've got 10 assists now as a team. Maryland has 15. That shows how well they've been distributing so far today. Ball constantly moving, and it finds its way to Collins on the right wing. Missed it a little bit short, and Shaw strong for the rebound. That's number seven for Shaw. Pushing the pace up ahead for Brown. Trapped beneath the basket. Adds a nice layup to spin it up and in for two from... perpendicular to the basket. I don't even think that one hit the backboard, just kind of threw it up a little circus underneath the body shot. So Brown is now up to two points on the day. First bucket for her. And the lead back down to 17. Underneath the basket, that time was Bibby off of another nice dish. And Maryland responding well. They're now breaking a streak of one for their last seven from the field, now two for their last eight. Brown driving her way into the paint with Diamond Miller on her. The bigger Miller working hard on Brown, but that's a really nice move from Jillian Brown. A couple of nice layups from really, the freshman really from Michigan. Really, really strong move yeah. from Brown. Good skip pass to Miller. Extra pass for Sellers. Top of the key and hits it. Cheyenne Sellers is into double figures. Starting out where she left off in that second quarter. So here is Burton. Can she get something going offensively for Northwestern? Inside for Satterwhite. And Northwestern starting to get going in the paint a little bit more. They lead Maryland in that category now 18 to 10 in terms of the points in the paint. So Maryland's been more than happy to get it going from the outside, 10 for 17 from three. Next stoppage will send us into our media timeout, and it will be right exactly now. Plus, here on the main floor of the Xfinity Center, it's Maryland with an 18-point advantage as we head down the final stages of the third quarter of play. Chloe Bibby will turn around and can't hit Bibby. Now three for nine from the field, but Maryland has really gotten going off of the strength of the three-point shot, 10 for 17. Sellers is three for five from beyond the arc. Benzin four for five, and those two players have combined for 25 points for the Terps. On the other side, Satterwhite will find Hartman by the free throw line. Jillian Brown had a nice middle of the third quarter, but she gets it stripped away from Benzin. That's a jump ball, and possession's going to go the other way. That's a big reason why they're 11 and 6 on the campaign and a strong 3 and 3 in this conference. Bibby's able to find Owusu. That's a 3, and that's good. Ashley Owusu, two for two from beyond the arc. Everybody getting going from downtown. And just getting her jumper going. I mean, we talk about her as a downhill driver, and that's about it. Not really a jump shot shooter. And she's showing today that she has a little bit of everything in that package. That's a foul before the pass to the corner for Burton. Third quarter, and Northwestern 
needs to pick up the pace in a hurry. And that certainly won't help as it goes right through Morris's hands. And everyone has to keep their heads up over on the scores table on the other side. We do as well on this side of the floor. Here's Benson with her 14 points. Now Bibby up top for Sellers. Good skip pass to the left wing for Benzin, who's not going to miss from there. The ball movement on point, and Katie Benzin with the finishing touch. Everyone getting a touch. Katie Benzin with the final touch. Burton can't hit the runner, and it went out of bounds, last touched by a Turk. Northwestern able to keep it alive off the inbound play. And now Burton. Still just six points on the day for her, and that's a charge going the other way. The elbow extended, and Cheyenne Sellers doing everything on the offensive and now the defensive end. Learn from Veronica Burton in the first half. Drawing a charge on this end, Sellers doing it on the same end in the second. And that's three fouls on Burton, which is not a good sign for the Wildcats either. Bibby trying to get going with a turnaround to Cash. Really strong move, just come back off one leg, pivoting a little fadeaway. Bibby's up to nine points. Three Terps are in double figures. Sellers, Benzin, and Owusu, with Benzin leading the charge with 17 points, just five off of her season high. She set that against Coppin State on the road in Baltimore in the end of December. Morris will size up along two and hit. Morris is up to six points. This is a player who hasn't scored since December the 5th, but with no Kaylee Walsh, who has had double figure points days in the last three games that she played. She's not dressed today, so Morris trying to pick up the slack. Oh, Benson thought about that one, but instead gave it off for Wusu. Tried to get it back up top for Benson, who was read really well by the Wildcats who are coming the other way in transition. Satterwhite with a nice move and an even nicer two. Really strong move, little cradle up into the basket. So the lead's 22, and that also allowed Northwestern to go two for one when they moved quickly down the floor. Bibby's able to track it down. Awusu, why not? Why not? Ashley Awusu from beyond the arc yet again. Katie Benson just feeding into the team. Everybody hitting threes today. Three for three from beyond the arc for Ashley Awusu. The Terps as a team are 13 for 20, 65% from three-point land, and that's an offensive foul going the other way. 15 points for Ashley Owusu. Terps can hold for the final shot of the third quarter of play. Benzin leads all scorers. Here's Bibby, two seconds to go. Left wing three. It's that kind of day for Maryland. For Northwestern, Veronica Burton with only six points on the day, two for seven from the field, and she has been held without a steal so far today. She has not had fewer than two steals in a game all season long. Satterwhite can't hit. And Bibby initially had the rebound. Now Benzin fights for it. And Benzin's able to get it to Miller. Up ahead now for Sellers. Seems like all the 50-50 balls have gone Maryland's way. Benzin can't hit from beyond the arc. And a foul will go the other way. Right example, and she's been setting the example with her play as well from beyond the arc. Five for seven from three, and Maryland as a whole, 64%, 14 of 22 from downtown. Here's Burton trying to get going. Works its way to the corner for Hartman off the mark. Shaw with a good offensive rebound and the putback for two. Courtney Shaw is up to four points and eight rebounds. She is leading her team with rebounds. Chloe Bibby on the other side with nine rebounds. The most boards for either player on this team, or in this game, rather. Not the best of shot selection that time for Miller, and Northwestern can come the other way. Josh, for Northwestern, it's as much right now about building good habits, getting more momentum into the next game as I was up next, and a held ball coming up here. Possession arrow is gonna send it back the way of the Terps. and looking ahead towards future games. Sellers is off the mark that time. Up next for Northwestern Iowa, Illinois, and at Purdue. As a transition, three is off the mark that time from Burton. She has really struggled from the field as Brown goes up strong and gets the foul. 
See the Wildcats down more than 25 points, but getting involved, getting on the glass, no effort lacking as we just talked about. It's a Northwestern team that's battled some adversity. They had a long stoppage, including a really high profile test against Oregon at home in December that got canceled for COVID reasons. And you know they had to come back, had to play four straight games, make it five straight games in the Big Ten. And they were able to come away with two wins in that. That is a long break. It's something a lot of teams around the nation on both the men's and the women's side of things have had to deal with. And it's not really something you can prepare for. This is all brand new. There's no playbook. Second of two is good as well. So 67-43 is the score with about eight minutes to go in the ball game. Benson with 17, Sellers with 11, Bibby 12, Owusu with 15, four players into double figures for the Terps. Satterwhite now leading all scores for Northwestern with nine. Hartman right behind her with eight. Benson's able to get it inside for Reese. Double teamed and then single teamed, and so she spun it up and in using the window. And that's a move we see a lot from Angel Reese coming into the middle of the lane, looking like she's going to go left and spin back and go right. Reese three for five shooting, adding five rebounds as well. Northwestern has never come to College Park and beaten the Terps. The one win all time against Maryland came on New Year's Eve 2019. A 81-58 drubbing of the Terps. Burton had 23 points and six steals in that game. But 11 to one all time, Maryland has the all time series lead against Northwestern, looking to make it 12 and one. Miller's been held fairly quiet so far today. Five points as she goes crashing to the floor and she's going to the foul line. Six foot three frame, just super athletic, super quick, being able to get downhill quickly, get to her left hand and go to the line for two. Five turnovers for Diamond Miller today and that's kind of the other side of the coin when you talk about how quickly she can go. Yeah, sometimes you gotta wonder if she's out of control, sometimes you gotta wonder if she's in control, but this time, in control, going to the line. Taisa Kozlova will check into the game in place of Katie Benzen, the sophomore from Russia. It's averaging a hair under two points per game this season. Katie Benzen heading to the sidelines. She's up to 17 points. We'll chat with her after the game is over. I'm sure there'll be plenty to talk about on a day where she's five for seven. All of her field goal attempts were from three-point land, and she only missed two of them. I'd like some advice on my shooting. So here's Burton. Brown with six points, two for six from the field for the freshman who was picked number 50 by ESPN in the nation. Maryland still looking to go quick. Swung over to the other side, Koslova did just enough to keep it in between the white lines. Now the Terps can reset. Miller, who was all Big Ten first team last year. Missed it off the back rim. Koslova hustling for it, but Shaw is able to take it away in the end. Burton coming the other way. Stops and connects. And Joe McEwen will take a timeout as the Terps drop their second consecutive game. Last time out on the road in Columbus. Chance to break their two game skid though. And they're certainly in the driver's seat to do that now with about six minutes to go and a healthy 22-point lead. And for Maryland, you know, we talked about for Northwestern, have to kind of shake this one off and get right back into the swing of things. They play Iowa next time out, speaking of Clark and the Hawkeyes. But for Maryland, this is a really good opportunity to build momentum heading towards the final stages as Miller is going to be headed to the free throw line. Field now making nine points, but she's somebody who doesn't need to be the leading scorer to really contribute. And she missed the opening part of the season with a knee injury, now finally getting back to that 90, 95%. You just wonder what this team's gonna look like when she's at full, full strength. Of course, Maryland will not be at full strength the rest of the season with Faith Masonis out with a torn ACL. She's done for the year, as we mentioned. Big loss for Maryland, and they've been running that eight player rotation so far this season without Masonis, as Bibby can't connect from the left wing. Reese is there. She got the loose change and she cashed it in for two. The best offensive rebounder in the country, shown why right there, just find yourself a position underneath the basket to get that rebound and put it right back up. Maryland has struggled in the offensive rebounding category. Only five of those today. Northwestern's had 11. As Shaw's able to draw the foul going up.
Terps have also been outscored in the paint, 24 to 18. As the first of two for Shaw is no good. So we mentioned Shaw, local product, Perry Hall, Maryland. First team all county in volleyball as well at Perry Hall High School. As a second of two is good. Mercy Ademusayu will come into the game, the freshman from Nigeria, who sees game action for the first time in the calendar year 2022. Only other Big Ten action of the season was six minutes against Wisconsin. That was all the way back on December the 5th. As Collins gets her way into the paint, can't get it to go off the back rim. Reese still fighting hard, and Koslova can't get it to go. The bench was ready to go nuts if Koslova was able to connect, and then a hard foul with Reese and Burton going for it. Both a little slow to get up, and both thankfully do get up. Two chances for the Turks to put more points on the board there from the offensive rebounds, but can't do it. Doesn't really matter, though. Up 75-49 at the under five. That will take us into the media timeout. Terps by 26 on Big Ten Plus. They're rolling. Nebraska and Wisconsin come to College Park as well in the early stages of February. All that on Big Ten Plus as well. Emma Chardon has checked into the game for Maryland, the freshman from Switzerland. As Paige Mott swings it over to the other side, both teams getting into their deeper parts of the bench a little bit more as Chardon's able to take it away. Sellers squaring up and knocking it down. Cheyenne Sellers is four for seven from beyond the arc. Great day for the freshman from beyond the arc, like you said, up to 14 points now on the day. Maryland has made 15 three-pointers. Northwestern's attempted 19, as that's gonna be another turnover against the Wildcats. 60% from the three-point line. That's absolutely ridiculous. Coming into today, they were averaging about 35% from three-point land, which is still a very respectable number, but 60% from three, and it's been just about everyone. Sellers four for seven, Benson five for seven, Owusu three for three, Bibby's hit two as well. Angel Reese has added one, and now Miller trying to get in on the action, but she just missed it off the right rim. Almost on cue, Diamond Miller. Haley Weaver, the freshman, getting in the action on the other side from Solon, Ohio, who hasn't played since December the 11th. But Weaver getting a little bit of playing time. All this, of course, in case you're just joining us with no Kaylee Walsh, one of the more impactful freshmen on this Northwestern team. So Joe McEwen having to go a little bit deeper into his bench. Chardon has it swatted away. And now Daly coming the other way. Bounce pass up ahead for Weaver. And a foul will be drawn. What do you say in the locker room after a game like this, knowing you have Caitlin Clark and the Hawkeyes coming up next? It's a quality team that you played against. It's not exactly the way you would have liked to lose, lose the game, but you saw effort from your team throughout the entire game. So you can't fault them for their effort. Like you said, they're missing Walsh. That's a big piece of what they do. So it's just kind of a game where you maybe look at the film once, and then you kind of just throw it away and move on. It will be the first three-game losing streak of the year in conference play for Northwestern. They hadn't lost two in a row in the regular since the final two games of the regular season last year, at least in conference play. And it'll be their first three-game losing streak of the 2021-22 campaign. Okay. 78-54 with two minutes and 20 seconds to go after Melanie Daly was able to knock that one down. Miller still trying to go from three and does. Second of the day for Diamond Miller. Fifth turp into double figures, making it rain from deep. Awusu, Benzin, Bibby, Sellers, and Miller all with double figures in terms of the points. As we take one more look at it from Diamond Miller, not necessarily known as a three-point shooter, her eighth and ninth from beyond the arc today. And she gets so much arc on that shot. It looks like a rainbow coming up and down from the ceiling of the Xfinity Center. Eight for 21 from beyond the arc on the season for Diamond Miller, who can get it going in the paint as well. This time she'll kick it out for Sellers. Nice pass inside for Chardon, who runs into a lot of traffic and commits the foul, trying to get it back from McWilliams. And it is McWilliams who goes to the line. 
knocks down the first of two. This is a really highly recruited player out of high school. You look at the offers that she had out of high school. Teams like Michigan and Kentucky were interested in her, came to Northwestern and starting to find her role off the bench in her sophomore campaign. Now you have to think, especially with players like Burton and Satterwhite on their ways out, that she's going to step into a much larger role coming up soon. Koslova can't get it to go off the back rim. They talked about the balance that this Northwestern team has between the youth of some of the freshmen and sophomores that they have and then the experience of players like Satterwhite and Burton. So again, another foul here trying to drive. It's Diamond Miller's foul, and that is her third of the day. So with about 81 seconds left to play, the first of two for Melanie Daly is up and good. Daly, another one of those freshmen that we talked about who was really highly recruited out of high school. Kansas State, Villanova, Virginia Tech as well. As you look at the bench points for Maryland, starting to get going a little bit more than the average, but really a lot of the points have come from the starting five of Miller, Reese, Benz, and Owusu, and Bibby. And a big reason why that number is what it is is Sellers with her 14 points off the bench leading the way. Here she is one more time. Biller, Miller rather, Diamond Miller. Third three of the day. Way downtown on that one. And the exclamation point to what has been a truly sensational day of three point shooting for Maryland. 59% as Northwestern's able to answer with Daly who has quickly gotten herself up to seven points. No Northwestern player into double figures, but three with nine points in Satterwhite, Burton, and Shaw. Hartman is eight as well. Shaw's one point away from double-double. How about Mimi Collins? Another player from beyond the arc. Sellers takes a three, hits the front rim, just kindly finds its way to Mimi Collins in the corner. Well, certainly didn't want to be excluded from the party. as now six different Maryland Terrapins have hit a three-pointer. And Northwestern, with a shot clock and game clock about the same, going to dribble out the remainder of this ball game. Daly will pull up from two, no good. Diamond Miller with a rebound, her fourth of the day. And that is how this game will come to a conclusion, a convincing win for the Maryland Terrapins. Yeah, really complete performance from the Terps. They looked really good today. After two straight losses, finally getting back to it.